Hi fans and welcome to this 2016 wrap up show here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. The Wolverines lost to the West Allegheny Indians in the WPIAL semifinals 35 to 7. We're going to sit down with Woodland Hills head football coach George Novak to review the loss to the West Allegheny Indians as well as the 2016 season and we'll also talk about coach Novak's retirement. All of that and more here on the wrap up show here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Throw straight down the middle, wide open, throwing down the right seam is Vendemia. Cross in the shotgun. Looks left, looks back right. He'll dump it off. Fullback screen as a Wolverine was basically tackled right near the line of scrimmage. That allows the fullback to spring out of the backfield, Will Weber, and bring it into Wolverine's territory to the 41-yard line. Power pistol. Ross will hand off. It's Weber running to the right-hand side, cutting it back to the left. He's down towards the 30-yard line. Wildcat this time, Kenny White, the quarterback, running to the right. He's down the right sideline, and he will take it into the end zone. They will say, yes, he does, and it is a touchdown covering 14 yards. Jones in the pistol, hands off. Hill running right. He's got the first down and more into Indians territory, inside of the 40-yard line, finally brought down inside of the 35, around the 33-yard line. A big run for Jawan Hill over the right side. Third down and six. From the 30-yard line, Jones off the play action, steps up, throws down the right seam. The pass complete inside of the five-yard line, brought down at the one is Deontay Robertson. Robertson crabs right, handoff, Hill bouncing it to the right-hand side. He'll dive across the goal line for a Woodland Hills touchdown, and the Wolverines are a point away from tying this football game. Ross looking left again. Now he's going to step forward, and uh, he's going to run to the right. He's pressured, he's wrapped, he will be sacked by Austin Balashek. Low snap by McAllister, Whitehurst Pent is blocked. The Indians are gonna pick it up. They're gonna run down inside of the 15, down towards the 12 yard line. He'll hand off, running to the right hand side is Weber, and they say he's into the end zone for a touchdown for the Indians. Lipford, the quarterback, as he throws to the left-hand side. The pass is complete to Will Weber, and Will Weber is off to the races, and he will finally be brought down inside of Woodland Hills territory at the 33-yard line. He's going to run to his right. No, he's going to throw it off. Wide open is Vandemia, and Vandemia will wrestle his way across the goal line for a West Allegheny touchdown. Jones. And the pistol looks left the whole way, throws left. The pass complete on that far sideline to Derek Carraway. Jones looks left, throws left, pass complete. Avin Abramovitz, he's off to the races inside of the 40, and he's brought down at the 35-yard uh, line. A touchdown saving tackle over on that far sideline. Wolverines run the counter to the left again. It's Denard running left. He's inside of the 20, still on his feet, down towards the 15-yard line. And what another great burst by Rodney Denard. Fourth and 18 at the 25. Jones off in play action, he's pressured, he's going to step forward, he is going to try to drive his way forwards for some positive yardage, he'll pick up just four to the 21-yard line, giving it back to the Indians. Two receivers split to the left-hand side as the handoff is going to go to Weber as he runs to the right, slides his way forward back to the left, he'll cross the 50, still on his feet, driving his way forward to the 46-yard line. West A is going to motion to the shotgun. They'll look to the right-hand side. The pass is complete. Out of the backfield is uh, the tailback, and they're going to say he steps out at the nine-yard line. Ross, the quarterback, looks left, looks back right. Throws it across the middle. Touchdown, West Allegheny. Pass completed to Mateo Vendemia. Good snap by McAllister. Whitehurst gets the punt away. Punt that will carry him off of the face mask of a West Allegheny Indian, and Rodney Denard gets the football for the Wolverines. It'll be first and ten for Woodland Hills. Ross is the quarterback. He'll roll off a of play action to the near side right. He'll dump it off, and it is complete to the fullback. The big fella, Anthony Totkus, is brought down inside of Woodland Hills territory. Second and long for West A, the ball at the 50-yard line. And the pass is complete for West Allegheny first down. Mateo Vandemia was open, caught the football one-handed. Ross, the quarterback, hands off. Kenny White running to the right-hand side. He'll dive across the goal line for a West Allegheny touchdown. <laughs> Hi.
Hi again fans and welcome to this 2016 wrap up show here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Adam Guskey here sitting down with Woodland Hills head football coach George Novak and coach Novak. Before we talk about the whole 2016 season, let's take a look back to the game against West Allegheny, the loss in the semifinals. Your team fought tooth and nail all the way through the latter stages of the second quarter. They blocked that punt and it seemed to really give the momentum late in that second quarter. You're right, Adam, for you know, the better part of the first half, most of it was a pretty even football game going back and forth. And uh, you know, I was happy with the execution and you know, the kids were doing well. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we had two opportunities, uh, one in the red zone and one on the 39 where we didn't capitalize. And you know, we missed a few blocks and had a couple penalties and put us back in a, a bad situation to punt. And, we didn't execute the punt while well, we missed the block, and they were able to block the, uh, the punt and get good field position, score, and go into the half a, with a 14-7 lead. Well, the season is now in our rearview mirror, and there's a lot to talk about. Uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, a very good senior class, a lot of contributing seniors that did a lot of great things for this team, leading them to a, a semifinal uh, appearance that a lot of people didn't think would have been possible going into 2016. Yeah, a lot of people at the beginning of the season said, Coach, you don't have anybody back on offense that started last year, and you only got a couple guys on defense. I said, these guys have been working hard, and it'll turn out all right. We'll develop as the year went on, and, and the kids did. Coach, I recently saw a list of the guys that made all conference from your team, and it is very long. Senior class, we had a great group, and uh, several will, will be awarded all conference honors, uh, you know, defensively. Ashid Page Jones was first team all conference. Uh, Mike McAllister was first team all conference defensive line. Uh, Saeed Holt was first team all conference uh, defensive back, strong safety. And Derek Carraway made first team all conference. He had eight interceptions this year. They all had great years. Uh, uh, Big John Robinson made second team all conference, which, you know, he did a great job for us all year. And uh, Rodney Denard was one of the juniors that made second team all conference in the defensive backfield. You know, on offense, uh, Ramon Childs made first team all conference guard. Uh, junior DeVega Bird made first team all conference at uh, offensive tackle. Jawan Hill made first team all conference running back, which was a great honor because there's a lot of running backs in our conference. Oliver Mabronovich made first team all conference at wide receiver. Deontay Robinson made honorable mention all conference. Austin Belichick made honorable mention defensive lines. Also, both of our kickers made it, made honorable mention. Uh, Chuck Hancheck made honorable mention as a place kicker. Had a great year uh, on extra points and field goals. And Mike Whitehurst made honorable mention punter for us. Had a great year punting. Got us out of some tough spots as a punter. So we're proud of those two guys. So we had a number of guys that made first team all conference. And several of the juniors made it and they're coming back. And, you know, attributed to the hard work and dedication of the senior class. And uh, we didn't have a large amount of seniors, but uh, they worked hard. And, you know, a lot of them got recognized. And a lot of them will get to go to college next year. Well, Coach, we kind of touched on the seniors. So let's talk a bit about these juniors that are coming back next season. A, a very deep uh, junior class, as well as some sophomores that contributed to this football team and some freshmen as well. Yeah, Adam, there's, there's a number of guys coming back, uh, you know, defensively. Because we use a lot of guys on the defensive line. A lot of guys got some experience playing on the defensive line. Uh, Terrell Barlow is coming back. Uh, Micah Lucas is coming back. They both played a lot. Uh, Vega Bird's coming back. He played uh, halfway through the season. We just kept on offense, but he played a lot of defense this year, too. Uh, Eric Oliver played defensive line. Damian Thomas played on the defensive line. Uh, Jalen Holloway played linebacker for us. In the secondary, we have uh, Rodney Denard, Nas Taylor, and uh, Jawan Smith. They all played in the secondary. So there's a number of guys. There's, there's a couple other defensive linemen who saw some action. Uh, uh, the freshman house played a lot in the last three games as a freshman and uh, did a nice job. He's a big kid. Uh, uh, Josh Berger played real well all year on the defensive line. So we had six or seven defensive linemen coming back that uh, did real well. 
on offense where we didn't have anybody coming back. We got, uh, you know, DeVega Burr was first team all conference, uh, had a great year. Uh, Danny Jones, our quarterback, at the end of the year, and Mike Whitehurst both shared this job for a lot of the season. They're coming back. Uh, uh, Rodney Denard and uh, Juwan uh, Smith both played running back also. This year had a lot of experience, did a nice job. Eric Oliver's coming back at tight end. Freshman Josh uh, Rawlings had a lot of experience this year at tight end, so we got two really good tight ends coming back. And uh, Jeremy Thomas got a lot of playing time on offense. He's another freshman, so there's some experience coming back. I'm sure I missed somebody, but I uh, tried to hit most of them. But uh, Jalen Lucas also played a lot. Uh, it was a backup, and Chris Jones is a backup at uh, H-back, so they got some practice time and some playing time. Well, Coach, obviously you had the opportunity to see the WPIL 5A championship game. You even said before the interview that you went down to the game with Bill Morton. Um, talk about your impressions of that game. Were you surprised at all that McKeesport was able to keep it close? And secondly, talk about the end of that football game where there were some controversial calls. Well, first of all, you know, Coach Morton and I have been together for a long time. And, you know, he's, he's retired a few years now. He's had some, some health problems, but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed going down with him. And we were fortunate enough to sit in the press box. So saw a lot of WPL people and officials and old friends. And we just had a great time up there and uh, enjoyed the time with Bill. We got to reminisce, told some old stories. And uh, we enjoyed watching the game and analyzing it. But uh, I knew McKeesport was very good up front. And uh, West Allegheny is good up front, so I knew it would be a, a battle. Uh, I didn't realize how good uh, the fullback running back for um, McKeesport was. And, uh, you know, they were controlling the line of scrimmage both ways. I think McKeesport uh, played very well. The game could have went either way. It's one of those games nobody should lose. And uh, did go into overtime. Uh, some really odd, freakish type things happened down the stretch here, but uh, you know, I thought McKeesport controlled the line. Of I knew they had a good offensive and defensive line watching them on tape earlier throughout the years so against people that we played and they played. And I knew they'd give them a game because that's where their strength was. And they had a good senior class, McKeesport. Quarterback was very good. Their defense was outstanding. Uh, uh, I think the only way that uh, West Allegheny could beat them Similar to us, they had to pass the ball, and you know, uh, they weren't as successful against them as us, but they were successful, and that's how they moved the ball to score most of their points was on the passing game. And, uh, it was a great game. You know, a couple tough calls down the end. Uh, you know, McKee Sports scored, and then he, West Day went on the on, pretty onside kick and got it, and they drove down, and with less than two minutes to play, they threw the ball, and it was picked off by West Allegheny. And, on the other side of the field, a late flag was thrown for holding or pass interference on uh, McKeesport, which I didn't see the actual play. It was a tough call. and uh, I gave him another play, and they were able to score. And then they did the onside kick again, and there wasn't much time left. Uh, and uh, they moved the ball and tried to attempt, were try, attempting a 50-yard field goal. And, uh, Unfortunately, the, uh, they, were, they were up by three points because when they did score, they, they, they had a bad snap on their extra point. So if they had made that, they would have won the game. Now, I think when they intercepted, they doused the players from McKeesport, doused Coach Miller with uh, water thinking they won the game. And then they called a penalty and they scored and went ahead. McKeesport drives down. They're up by three, missed the extra points. So they're still up by three. Uh, and then West State drove down and on a field goal to temp with one second on the clock. A uh, guy dove in to try to block it and he r rolled into him and they called the penalty, moved it in. And he's one of the best kickers in WPL. He made the kick to tie the score and then it went into overtime. McKee Sport scored, got the kick, and West Allegheny scored, went for two, and got it, and won the football game. It was a uh, Outstanding game. I think they drenched the coach from um, McKeesport, Coach Miller, twice.
in that period of time when they thought they'd won the game both times and they ended up losing it. So that's a word to the wise. Don't do anything prematurely. It's not over till it's over. Feel bad for McKeesport though. They played a heck of a ball game. That was good advice. I, I got you when the clocks hit zero back in 96. Yep, you <laughs> did. I remember that. Looking back, you know, talking about 1996, it's a, a lot of memories and this is something that obviously we have to talk about. Last week, uh, you uh, submitted your retirement papers to uh, the Woodland Hills School Board and it was approved. So uh, you have officially uh, stepped down as the head football coach at Woodland Hills High School and you will no longer be the athletic director effective at the end of this school year. Yeah, I, you know, had a great run at them. Uh, enjoyed the whole time here. Had some great, great experiences with a lot of players, a lot of assistant coaches, teachers, administrators, school board members, the community. You know, it's been a great experience for me and my family. Both my sons played here, went to school here. Uh, you know, have no regrets. You know, worked as hard as I can. Uh, enjoyed the kids. You know, when I came here in 1990 or 1987, I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, I quickly fell in love with the kids and the teachers and the parents and the communities. I just fell in love with the communities and it's been my life for 30 years. I've been in coaching 40 years. Woodland Hills has been 30 years and uh, I have so many great memories of great teams, great players, average players that did well. You know, one of the fondest memories I, I have is, you know, not the games and that, but how well the kids do. They go on to college and they come back and I meet them and talk to them and see their families and their kids. And I've coached a dozen kids of players that I've had over the years. So it's, it's just been a, a great time. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll miss it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I just felt it was time, 30 years, and it's time to move on. You think you'll be at all involved in, you know, maybe finding your replacement, at least on the football coach side of things? Well, that's going to be up to the school board and superintendent, however they want, you know, I'm sure, you know, there'll be some alumni that apply, and maybe they don't want me involved because I'm close to a lot of the different guys. but. Uh, you know, it's going to be their decision, the school board, who they vote and who they pick. So I'm sure they'll do a good job and pick the right man. You know, I hope they keep it in the Woodland Hills family because I think, you know, people know their tradition and what what's important at Woodland Hills. And uh, they know the people and the communities and, you know, the midget programs and everything else, how important it is. Talked about some of the alumni that come back and that you have an opportunity to talk to, and there's some that we need to talk about, uh, including a couple of guys that are going to be playing in the uh, NCAA Division II National Championship Tournament starting this weekend. They won the PSAC Championship, the Cal Vulcans, uh, both Jawan Turner and Tom Green, integral parts of the Cal Vulcans PSAC Championship team. Yeah, they're both great players. I was uh, able to get out and watch them play against Edinburgh a couple weeks ago. And they were both had outstanding games, but uh, you know Tom caught the first touchdown pass. He's having a great year. Uh, Juwan knocked down about three passes, and uh, you know this year he's caused and recovered two fumbles and ran them for touchdowns. So he's had a great career there. He's one of the captains of the team, one of the leaders. Also on the other side of the field is going to be one of our alumni, Mike Campolo, who's been coaching at IUP for about 20 years now. So it's kind of two Woodland Hills on both sides of the field, but uh, it'll be a great game, I'm sure. Last time they played, uh, Cal U won by three points, so it's going to be a tough game for both teams. Well, let's talk about a couple of Pitt Panthers. We've talked about them all season long, but uh, Juan Price, arguably the best defensive end in the nation, continues to be impressive. Uh, had a great game this past week against the, the Duke Blue Devils, and Mike Caprera is having a great career, finishing up a great career at the University of Pittsburgh, both on the field and with his humanitarian work. Yeah, I can't be more prouder than those two guys. They're gonna finish their home Pitt uh, game against Syracuse this week. will be their last home game, so. I'm torn between the two games because I, I love all four of the guys. They were great kids. And uh, uh, Mike is just a super person, so is Juan. And, they, you know, all four of them have great families that they came from. And I think that's a big part of it, too. The background they have from the support from their families 
and I'm proud to call them all Wolverines. Another guy that I'm sure you're proud of is Lafayette Pitts, who was activated by the Miami Dolphins the day that you and I sat down before the West Allegheny game, maybe a couple hours after that he was activated. So we didn't have an opportunity to talk about that. He played the following week and got his first tackle this past week against Saint, or rather against Los Angeles. Yeah, I, you know, I'm so proud of Lafayette. He had to overcome a lot of things uh, just in high school and to get into college and to graduate from college, uh, all the work and, you know, he's one of the hardest workers we ever had here. Uh, when he was here for three years, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, we ran sprints. I never remember him losing a sprint, a 40-yard sprint, the whole time because he went 100%. You know, he's a dedicated kid, hardworking, and I'm sure he'll be successful. I'm just real happy he got activated and got on the roster. I'm sure you're up to set to see that uh, Quentin Jefferson hurt his knee and won't be able to finish off this season. Yeah, I mean, he's had a good start and was doing well, but then he got injured. And, you know, that's part of the game. He's been injured before and bounced back, and uh, Quentin's a great kid, and he'll, he'll bounce back. He'll be there next year. Well, we talked about, you know, you stepping down and retiring as the head football coach, and uh, we talked about you no longer being the athletic director effective at the end of this school year. And, uh, you know, personally, I, I want to thank you, not just for being my football coach uh, 20 years ago now, but uh, for sitting down with me 150 times <laughs> over the past 12 years uh, for doing this with me over the past 12 years. It, it has been an honor, uh, not just for you to be my coach, but uh, for you to become my friend over the past several years. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate that. And I've, I've enjoyed every, all 150 of them. <laughs> you and Mr. Schaefer, I want to thank Mr. Schaefer, too, because uh, you guys are a big part of Willing Hills football now after you played. And you're back in it, and you do a great job for the kids, and our communities get to watch the game. It's, it's a very, very positive thing for Woodland Hills. And, uh, you guys are very professional with it, and I appreciate that. I'll tell you what, who, whoever is replacing you, not just as athletic director, but more so as football coach, has huge, huge shoes to fill. Well, I'm sure it'll, it'll be the right guy, and I'm sure he'll do a good job. And You know, we got some great kids. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of experience coming back, but it's going to take a lot of work. And we've got some nice young kids coming up in ninth grade, and the midget teams were good this year. So, you know, the f future looks promising. If they stay together and work hard, I think they'll be successful. Coach, again, thank you so much for all you have done for me, for us, and for Woodland Hill. Well, thank you, Adam, and I want to say thanks to all the people in the community, all the alumni, everybody that played here all my assistant coaches, all the teachers, all the administrators I've worked with, and all the school boards that have been here and given me your support. And I really appreciate that. And a lot of help from a lot of people in the community, a lot of the businesses uh, keep supporting Woodland Hills. It's a great school district. They got a lot of great people here working. We got a lot of young people with a lot of energy. Uh, superintendent's active. The school board's doing a super job. Uh, I think we're on the right track. It seems to be getting better all the time. And uh, it's, it was the toughest thing in my life to leave uh, Woodland Hills or to retire from Woodland Hills, but it was time and I'm ready to move on. So thank all of you for uh, your friendship and I have a million memories that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Thank you. We'll be back to wrap this up in just a minute here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. We are the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Since 1987, we've been a part of some of the most electrifying football games in Western Pennsylvania, and we've established a national reputation of excellence. Whether you're a former player, a Woody High alum, a parent, or a fan, you're part of our Wolverine family. And now you can join us by becoming a part of our new booster club, the Wolverine Nation. Visit whfba.org and see how your donation can help our student athletes while earning you unique benefits. We're more than just a booster club. We are the Wolverine Nation. Again, fans, we thank you for joining us all season long here on the Woodland Hills Football Network, and we hope you have a blessed holiday season and a joyous new year. We hope you join us in 2017 as the Wolverines begin their quest for a sixth WPIAL title under a new football coach, and we wish him the best of luck, whoever he may be. For everybody at the Woodland Hills Football Network, I'm Adam Gusky, and we'll talk to you again in the fall.
This has been a presentation of the Woodland Hills Football Network. Watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and as always, visit us at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com.